Sahir Airbase for the fifth edition of Bahrain's International Air Show. Since it was first established back in 2010, the show has expanded and developed. It's now an integral part of the Gulf region's business calendar. This year, 187 companies are due to take part. This promises to be the region's fastest growing air show to date. Early morning on day one of the air show and visitors are already starting to arrive. There are more than 100 aircraft on display, ready for inspection by tens of thousands of visitors. Among them is His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, King of Bahrain, now preparing for the opening ceremony. An experienced helicopter pilot, His Majesty is a passionate supporter of aviation in all its forms. It falls to His Royal Highness Sheikh Abdullah to declare the show officially open. As usual, business is at the heart of the show. The Bahrain International Air Show is known to be the best place to network, uh, to conduct high-end business meeting and also for hospitality. It's a who's who of civil, military and private aviation leaders and executives, meeting in person, finalizing deals and discussing future collaborations. 11 of the world's top 15 aerospace companies are represented here. Well, we find the Bahrain Air Show extremely useful. It's become an event on the circuit, that an air show where anybody who's anybody is at this show but it provides an intimacy where we can connect, we can hold business meetings, we can hold the industrial partnering meetings, and we find that is one of the key benefits that this show provides. Alongside international corporations, there is a corresponding sense of energy and optimism in the regional business sector. Oh yes, we are very excited to be here. It's a perfect opportunity to meet all our friends and colleagues from various parts of our business, our suppliers, aircraft manufacturers, engine manufacturers, all our dear friends from the other airlines and of course from the government authorities. At the last Bahrain Air Show in 2016, Gulf Air announced that its new fleet was on the way. In Washington State, USA, Boeing can build as many as 14 Dreamliners in any given month for its many global clients. Every detail of Gulf Air's new aeroplanes is delivered to the airline's precise specifications. Back at the show, another of the new fleet acquisitions is on display. And of course the Airbus uh, 320 Neo, which is also another uh, actually a very interesting point because uh, 18 years ago Galfer was uh, the first company in the region flying 320 Airbus at all, and now is the first company in the region flying 320 Neo. For all at Gulf Air, it's a proud moment to see one of their new aircraft in its sparkling new livery displayed for the first time at the air show. As the corporate side of the show starts to accelerate, out on the apron, a different kind of business is about to take place. So this is the Royal Air Force Eurofighter Typhoon. FGR4 uh, and His Majesty the King has very kindly invited us to the air show uh, for defence engagement and also to showcase what the Eurofighter can do. This is the Royal Air Force Typhoon, flown by Flight Lieutenant Jim Peterson. The Typhoon is a hugely capable aircraft, but there are practical limits in place at the air show. 
Uh, this can easily go supersonic at low level, but we would break all the windows around here. What you'll see is me up to 600 knots or 0.9 Mach, which is 90% of the speed of sound. Uh, but what you will see is the full performance of the Typhoon with regards to how hard it can turn. So I will push negative 3G into positive 9G. An impressive display from an aircraft that plays a frontline role in the Gulf region. The focus of this year's show is space, and in the past week, the Kingdom of Bahrain has been honoured to host a legendary astronaut. Space attracts us all. I think Colonel Al Warden, Command Module Pilot for 1971's Apollo 15 lunar mission. I think every country in the world that can contribute whatever they can to the pursuit of space, that's the right thing to do. The Colonel's words inspire audiences across Bahrain, and they draw attention to the Kingdom's National Space Science Agency. Dr. Mohammed Al Asiri explains. This agency, um, the target or the main goal behind it is to put Bahrain on a position in the uh, space field. The agency is planning to develop the country's first satellite program. It will be a nano-satellite for the purpose of training and education. And mainly this satellite will serve some of the needs of Bahrain in the area of scientific research. But it will put the foundation to the future in developing more and more sophisticated satellites that will meet the nation requirements. U.S. military is well represented here, and one aircraft in particular is drawing the crowds. The Osprey is not classified as an airplane or a helicopter, but is a new type of aircraft called a tilt rotor. The Osprey's huge rotors are 11 and a half meters in diameter, and they can be moved from the vertical to horizontal positions in as little as 12 seconds. The Osprey, the Osprey can take off and land anywhere that a helicopter can, but can move troops and cargo across the battlefield twice as fast and climb four times more aggressively than the helicopters it replaced. The airshow chalets are buzzing with corporate activity. One of the exhibitors is Texel Air, a Bahraini specialist charter company operating out of the international airport. So we do specialized cargo, ad, ad hoc cargo, commercial cargo, ACMI flying, and then anything that we're requested, essentially, we're sort of solutions provider. Texel Air is launching its new aircraft, the world's first Flex Combi, a Boeing 737-700 with special modifications. So it's uh, able to do combination flights. It has a total of seven different interior configurations uh, from economy seating with cargo, business class seating with cargo, and then also medical evacuation flights. Texel Air is one of Bahrain's new breed of specialist aviation startups. Business is good. Um, we're a, a growing company. Uh, Texel's relatively new, you know, started in 2014. So we, we are growing slowly um, and we're starting to build up our maintenance front as well with the airline. Another company with strong Bahraini links is exhibiting here for the first time. FAI is Germany's biggest business fleet operator and now partly owned by Muntelakat, Bahrain's sovereign wealth fund. FAI operates a fleet of 25 aircraft currently, uh, 24 of them are jet aircraft, 10 of them are operated under management for corporate owners, and the rest is owned by the company and is uh, in charter and especially air ambulance and other special mission. Like every other exhibitor, FAI is here to do business. I was very positively uh, impressed uh, about the size and the uh, audience. Uh, 
So uh, we definitely will come back in two years and I think it's a very good platform to uh, generate business. It's Alpha Sand from the United Arab Emirates. Coming in now, nicely in front of us. Very neat, very polished display team now. The Fusan Al Amarat team is always a favourite with the crowd here. Seven aircraft performing a precise aerial ballet. Long, long smoke trails around the sky of multi colours. What a fantastic sight! Like many other industries, the aerospace sector is increasingly focused on the issue of cyber security. So we're interested in cyber security, uh, obviously a world where uh, nation states, criminals um, and private individuals are trying to steal data and even sabotage systems to make a point. PGI provides targeted training, everything from penetration testing and incidents response to digital forensics and security operations analysis. All the Middle East countries have been acutely aware of the risks that they face in cyberspace. A lot of their effort is going into developing digital economies, smart cities, transforming the lives of, of their country through enabling technology. But that ever-increasing reliance on technology creates vulnerabilities. So the services of companies like PGI are in demand. So this is our first time at the Air Show. It was an excellent event, uh, really high quality, and some of the conversations we've had have been first class, definitely coming back. Equal opportunities, justice and rights. Meanwhile, a special forum is taking place at the media center. Today I'm going to talk about the national efforts to promote the advancement of Bahraini women. Uh, the Women in Aviation Forum aims to inspire women to take up a career in the industry. Hend Al Awadi is on the panel. She's a senior airworthiness inspector at the Ministry of Transportation and Telecommunications. Basically, our job is to make sure that the aircraft flies safe and we are responsible for replacing all the items that need to be replaced, the parts. Uh, again, making sure that the aircraft is safe and land safely. Another aim of the forum is to discuss the challenges women face as they strive to succeed in the industry. And that's what we are here as a pioneer woman in aviation doing, trying to uh, reach out this message to everyone, starting with the woman and her community. That is a way to make the display. Check for your hand roll and continue climbing. Wow! Among the major international exhibitors is US giant Lockheed Martin. Back in June 2018, the Royal Bahraini Air Force announced a $1.12 billion deal with Lockheed. That deal means that the RBAF will be the first customer for the latest F-16 fighter variant known as the Block 70. It's flown here on the simulator by a proud Bahraini fighter pilot. Too fast, it's okay. Well, as you might have known, the F-16 Block 70 contract has been signed uh, between the Royal Bahraini Air Force, the government of Bahrain, and Lockheed Martin, and uh, it really visualizes the actual aircraft that we have purchased. So it's a really good opportunity for us to visualize what we're going to get over the next coming years. The new aircraft are still in production, but other F-16 variants are widely used by air forces across the Gulf region and beyond. Major Waters is in Bahrain to display the F-16 Viper. So when I go through and do my checks, I'm doing the one last walk around the aircraft to make sure there was nothing missed. But deep down in my heart, I know these guys uh, do their job the best. So it's, I'm fortunate that I really don't have to worry about it. I just get to walk around the jet, hop in, and strap on a rocket motor and go make a lot of noise. Major Waters has 30,000 pounds of thrust at his fingertips, allowing him to achieve flight after using only 1,000 feet of the runway. Ladies and gentlemen, stand up and 
put your hands together for Major Waters and the F-16 Fighting Falcon! I'll demonstrate a series of maneuvers which showcase F-16's ability, uh, its agility, and some of its capabilities. But I'll pull 9Gs upwards of 10 times throughout the display. That's more than most. And then it's, it's a very tight show, and we're burning a lot of gas, just again, showing just some of that speed and the agility, and it is just a fraction of what the F-16 is capable of. In the airport sector, the Bahrain Airport Company has strong visibility at the show. It has a string of announcements about the new passenger terminal on track to be opened in 2019. So on the construction front, we are moving as per the program. We expect to complete uh, all of the construction activities for phase one in September next year. Uh, we have been working on uh, the operational readiness. Um, we should be starting operational trials in early next year. On the commercialization front, uh, this uh, round of the Bahrain International Air Show is providing us an excellent platform to sign a host of concession agreements with the ground handlers, retailers, and food and beverage uh, concessionaires. Beyond the passenger terminal, there are yet more development plans. We also continue our uh, drive to, uh, to invest in the airport infrastructure. So we signed two contracts, one to develop a general aviation terminal, and the second one is to develop the future air cargo at the airport. So it's been an exciting uh, journey so far. Here is, on a fast run, the F-35 from Lockheed Martin. This is from the United States Marine Corps. Sinister looking aircraft, isn't it? It really means business. Meanwhile, Saudi Gulf has several announcements, including news of their fleet. Saudi Gulf Airlines today announced uh, with Airbus a deal to provide uh, Saudi Gulf Airlines with 20 A320neo family aeroplanes uh, within the next uh, few years. Uh, ten of them are firm and ten of them are option aeroplanes. And uh, this is part of the growth plan of Saudi Gulf Airlines. We continue to work with Bahrain. Over at the media center, helicopters are in the news with a major announcement from the Royal Bahraini Air Force. Thank you. I am uh, extremely honored to announce that His uh, Royal Highness the Crown Prince has signed a 912 million US dollar contract for 12 Bell AH-1 Zulu Cobra Viper attack helicopter. Bahrain is a US ally with a vision for the future and a regional leader in defense. These aircraft will be an important element of your military modernization. The new helicopters are scheduled for delivery from late 2022 onwards. More than 50,000 visitors have enjoyed this year's show, many of them in the busy and colorful surroundings of the public area. And excitement rises as they wait for a final display from one of the world's greatest aerobatic teams. So we are Fred Tricolori, uh, I'm Major Gaetano Farina, the Fred Tricolori Flight Formation Lead. We are here to uh, represent uh, Italy and the Italian Air Force with the uh, Fred Tricolori, with our jet, MB339, is uh, completely built in Italy by Air Mach by Leonardo Rui. Frecce Tricolori, literally three colored arrows, represent an Italian tradition of aerobatic teams that stretches back to the 1920s. The Frecce are the world's largest national team, with a nine-strong formation and one more aircraft performing solo.
Their final maneuver was made famous at the 2007 funeral of Luciano Pavarotti, Italy's much-loved opera singer. The last pass of French Tricolori is my favorite one, is the flag, Italian flag in the sky. We are really happy and proud to show our flag here in Bahrain. The Bahrain International Air Show 5th edition has surpassed all expectations. Total has now rocketed up to $5.1 billion of deals announced during the three-day show. We are excited with the results and the outcome of Bahrain International Air Show, the fastest growing air show in the Middle East. So by all means, it was a successful air show. We love Bahrain International Air Show. Obviously, it's right on our back doorstep, but um, we find that as a, a great opportunity for us to uh, show off our company to the world. Being here in Bahrain is the first time for me, but everyone is so welcoming. We travel all across the world and every place is different, but the hospitality that's been shown to us has just been unmatched. All the feedback that we have got from our customers was very positive, uh, overwhelming support from all of them. So definitely uh, we have a bigger task to do now to do a better airship for 2020. And so, the Kingdom of Bahrain's passion for aviation continues, and the stage is set for the sixth edition of the Bahrain International Air Show in 2020.